When people hear Listen Here, I want them to, I want their ears to kind of prick up and feel like it's something new and different that they're listening to and it's something original and because that's what I, I wanted to make it. Where do you go when you're going crazy? The songwriting processes are always different, I think, and each song is always different and I think it was Paul Kelly who said, you know, if I knew how to write a hit song, I'd write one all the time. Country boy, I'm ready to ride. I've kissed you in my dreams, now I've only got to find you. Funky Country Boys was inspired by the, the country audience. It is something that, um, that I've gotten to know a whole lot more in the last two, three years. And touring around with Lee Kernigan um, has really helped. I really wanted to write it with Matt Scullion because he's written Planet Country with Lee Kernigan and a whole lot of tracks with Steve Ford as well and so he, he knows how to, you know, really get all that energy that up there on stage. Dirty, dirty working on country boy. I didn't get to do a whole lot of festivals and a whole lot of, you know, De Denny Muster, Gimpy Muster and, and now I have and so I wanted to, to sing about it and I think it's a song that will be really fun to do at those kinds of places. The, the co-writing process was something that really helped me this time. I, I co-wrote a lot of the songs in Nashville and that was something really interesting to be able to take their ideas on board. The she's the one who holds you now and I hate that. She's the love that's on you. I Hate That is obviously a love song, as you can tell by the title, written by two Scorpios, um, Patrick, Patrick Davis, and he's, um, yeah, it was a very intense writing session, writing about, um, yeah, the, it actually hurts a little more sometimes being the heartbreak er instead of the heartbreak e. The guilt that's attached to that, and you know, I lost you, and I hate that, and she now has you, and I hate that, and I still want you, and I hate that. It was really important to me to work with Mark Moffat again on this record. I felt really comfortable working with him last time with Look It Up and this time even more so. I actually um, stayed at his house so his family became my family while I was away and um, it just, yeah, it, it brought the project I think into a tighter knit little bundle. Morning Jasmine. Good morning Mark, how are you? Fine, fine. That's great. It's it's bright and early. Yeah. But um yeah, bright and early Nashville time. It is, and which is kind of middle of the night Australia time, mm -hmm. so who are we waiting for? We're quite excited. We're waiting for Scott Vestal, who's probably he's one of I mean, to me he's one of the best banjo players in on the planet. I don't need another fixer up. Hiding your bad habits undercover. I want it all prepacked, gift wrapped, no assembly required after that. Chit-chat, ready to love me, lover, tonight, another fixer-upper. I wanted it to kind of sound like we were sitting on the front porch having a bit of a jam, and, um, and that's exactly what it sounds like if the people on your front porch are people like Bruce and Scott Vestal, who are gun musicians, who came into the studio and just laid down what they do best. Here's Mark. Back over there now. And um, <laughs> it's very exciting. This is Joe Nichols, I'm sure you all know. I toured with Joe Nichols in 2009 um, on his Size Matters tour and that was a really big deal for me. Um, I've been a really big fan of his since I was about 15. But what I really love about him and his voice and his whole, you know, artistry, his being, is the fact that he can strip it back and just do, you know, a really beautiful, honest ballad. We're singing today and we just finished recording a duet called I'll Try Anything. And um, we tried everything and anything and, and it was good. We, can, we think it's good. Apparently we will try anything to get a hit record. Apparently. We will try until we, by gosh, fail. Until but we didn't fail this time. I think we did really well. I think everybody did really good. 
Joe came in and just tore that up. It was amazing, like just two takes, and um, it was, yeah, his voice was just kind of like smooth silk all over it. It was just really amazing, and I knew it the whole time that he would just tear it up. So. Great singer, by the way. Excellent singer. I heard voice. he's pretty good as well. I don't know where I heard that. That's pretty good. I don't know either. Um, I wrote too much with Robin Payne and Tony Khan, which are they're, they're two of my really good friends here in Melbourne, and um, it was really important to have a song that I'd written um, with my friends in my hometown. Um, and so I was really pleased that we had too much, we were able to put too much on the record. Um, it was also really important um, that the instruments were really stripped back in the track because it's a very vulnerable sounding track. It actually speaks about love and, you know, perhaps you're not doing it properly. Maybe I want you too much. Maybe I'm asking too much of you. And it's, um, yeah, it's not a very confident track like other ones on the record. So I wanted it to sound really different and really exposed. I was a little bit alarmed when all of my family and friends were listening to I Faked It saying, Jazz, this is totally you. Only you would be able to sing this song called I Faked It. And I was, you know, it was a little bit, what do you mean? And I, I was kind of a little bit, you know, maybe this is a little bit too in your face, um, that kind of song for me. And then I was, um, while I was in the studio in Nashville working with Mark on this track, I, I really enjoyed singing it over and over again. And I think that's because it doesn't really matter whether you faked it or not. It's just the fact that, you know, ex-boyfriends would really hate hearing it. This is my booth. This is where I sing. Wear these, put these on. Headphones. You sing, that's what I look at for hours of the day. Look, it's got a hole in it. I even counted them. It's very simple. Here you go. And I, and I um, yeah, like to explore the different qualities of how to say no in the song and um, it was it was pretty fun to write this with George Terran who's written for Gretchen Wilson um, who is I, I really idolize Gretchen I like the fact that she's got a lot of girl power about her and that's what I try and bring to some of my songs and what I try and bring to the stage when I'm performing and so yeah he was he's the man to go to for an attitude kind of song and so when I say no was definitely one I had you know saved for him. One of the first things I noticed about If Your Love Was A Rock was the writers. Shay Smith actually co-wrote Pink Guitar, which is of course one of my favourite songs, and I wrote Fixer Upper with Rachel Proctor. I'm a big fan of bluegrass music. Dolly Parton has recorded um, quite a few bluegrass albums and I love them all. Um, so I was really excited to have a song with a bit of a, a more bluegrass feel to it. So this is my, you know, my first song with that kind of feel. So it's really different to everything else that's on the record and anything else I've ever recorded before. Um, sure Thing comes from a place of, um, I suppose, a little bit guilty in a way, um, but it, about the fact that you can't give the same kind of love to someone that they're feeling about you. I co-wrote Sure Thing with Jamie Paulin, who was the first guy co-writer I'd ever written with. Um, and it was the first time I'd ever seen anyone chew tobacco. And it seemed like it was a really, you know, a creative force. I actually bought a tin and took it home after that and um, have used about this much of it because I really don't like it. But um, yeah, it, it inspired me to do that. It reminds me a little bit of the red dress from the Look It Up album, but it's um, it's a little bit raunchier again because you don't have the dress to kind of hide the fact that you know you want someone to want you, you want them to want you for everything that you are, and you know all the things that Mama gave you and some things that she didn't. It's very it's very kind of out there, but I really loved the sassiness to the vocal quality. I actually um, purposefully recorded that one first before my uh, voice was warm so I could have a bit of a husk in there. Hopefully it worked. Um, but I, I really love this song and I cannot wait to do it live. It's just got a strut to it and the lyrics are just, yeah, really, really spot on. Okay, hi there. 
I'm with my friend Buddy Hyatt. Hello. We are at the Fun House. It's fun here. We're at the studio. We've been band tracking yesterday and today. So only two days because this band is pretty magic. It can do it in two days. It can do it in two hours, really. I just really wanted to hang out with them for two days. So um, what did you think of today and yesterday? Today, um, yesterday was exciting. Today was a little more fun because we were warmed up. That's true. Yeah. I was a bit jet lagged yesterday. What did you think of our recording sessions? It was very cool, very smooth, and you kicked ass this time and last time. No, well, you kicked ass, I think. This is Jim, <laughs> by the way. Yes, hello. I'm Hi, Buddy's Jim. brother. That's right. That's my other name. And you met <laughs> Buddy's brother. Right. Don't worry about his name. <laughs> Buddy's brother. And he plays the bass. I play the bass. I Don't Want to Talk About It has an amazing bluesy feel to it. I love the, the feeling of singing blues leaks. I practice them all the time in the shower, and so I was very excited to be able to use them in this recording. Um, definitely, you call them your vocal chops, that's what I call them, and I definitely use them to the max in this track. I think Miss Hyde has a little bit more of a poetic nature to it in the lyrics and um, the chord progression is different again in that it uses a lot of minor chords so it's quite moody. It is recorded completely different to the rest of the tracks on the album and I think that was really important to do that um, because yeah it comes from a very different place, very poetic, very yeah, very rich. Where do you go when you're going crazy? Who do you see when you think, baby? Who do you call when you need to cry when you're up? Let It Be Me is a track that really means a lot to me um, now because I've, I've seen the way that people that I really care about, my friends and family, have reacted to it. Um, some of them have actually named it as their favourite track on the album and so I'm really pleased that I recorded that one. Um, at the beginning I wasn't too sure whether it was a song that really suited me, Jasmine Ray, as an artist. Because it's very vulnerable and very, very much looking at the fluffy side of love and that's not something that I've ever really done. Even in love songs I haven't really taken a a, a fluffy disposition. I, I speak more about the pain and the unsureness of it all. Let it be me. Let it be me. I've been thinking about this album and what I wanted to achieve with this album since Look It Up came out and so it's really exciting to have achieved all of those goals and to have ticked off all those boxes. Um, had a little bit more time to think about what I wanted on this one, what I wanted to say, um, how I wanted to say it, who I wanted to say it to, and um, yeah, I think I've, I think the finished product really shows that, so I'm excited to have it out there, people to hear.